Something that is striking about the social sciences is that pretty much everyone would agree that what we study in the social sciences is more complex than what we study in other fields like physics for example. To say that the behavior of this plastic bottle should be more simple, at least in some way, to the behavior of a human being and especially to a system which includes many different human beings. But something that we even mentioned in another video is the fact that actually in physics we have some pretty complex modeling techniques. While in the social sciences the modeling techniques tend to be pretty simple. And so my question here was why? Why is this the case that we have an inversion between the complexity of the object and the complexity of the model? And since I was very curious about this question, I did what every other scientist would do. And so I asked this question on Twitter. And the result was um, very interesting, I would say. The good thing was that the content went some way viral, at least with respect to my standard, and so we got the opinion of many different other scientists, which is an amazing thing because actually we have very, very diverse opinion pool. But of course, this is the internet, which means that whatever you will say, there will always be someone with a completely different opinion, which is also interesting actually. So what I will do today is that I will try to summarize all the main arguments that I received, try to some way categorize them and see how they all work together and where they're going to lead us. But before jumping into the comments, I think it's important to provide some context. The context that usually lacks on social media platform because we have very limited space to actually explain our thoughts and so we have to condensate everything in very few characters but the problem is that this also means that there is going to be a lot of misunderstanding so this is actually what i posted on social media there was an image which was just a meme the main idea was just to make people haha and actually i was using the meme as a way to actually start thinking about the real issue that is actually what i explain why we have this opposite modeling techniques also i try to make clear and also i want to make it clear also here that this is not a competition between physics and the social sciences every field of research is unique and I think that asking this kind of question is not just to say like, oh, you know, this field is better, but to say like, why we have these differences? Is it good? Is it bad? Should we do anything? I think it's very important to understand where our field of studies is going and what we can do to improve it eventually. Another important point, which I didn't really explore, is actually what do I mean by complexity? Do we have a common definition of complexity? And unfortunately the answer is no. And also this is a YouTube video, I don't want to turn this into a paper, so I don't want to spend 10 minutes providing the correct definition of complexity, but I just want to say that here we're talking about complexity as something which tells us that some way a linear equation like y equal mx is some way simpler less complex than an integral, for example, or a series of differential equations, maybe. In any case, this is not supposed to be a strong formal definition. It's just something that is going to help us discuss today. And with that said, let's start with the argument. And the important thing is that actually we got a very good sample of arguments which some way agree with the statement and try to expand and explain why, according to them, we have this kind of paradox in modeling and some other people which instead completely disagree with the main claim and said that some way it's not true that models in physics are more complex than models in the social sciences. And I think here comes the first level of confusion because many people actually came from economics or computational social science. And actually to those of you who don't know, computational social sciences is pretty much the focus of this channel and we use pretty complex models to model how people interact for example how people change opinions and we can have network agent-based models a lot of pretty fancy stuff and of course people coming from this field told me something like it's just not true like in our field 
we use pretty complex math, so the claim is just false. And uh, this is true, but what actually I wanted to show some way is that in some fields like psychology, sociology and political sciences, this is still not the case. So probably I didn't explain it in the best way possible. Again, we are very limited with Twitter, but I wanted really to redirect the attention to those fields. Another comment which I got sometimes was the fact that in the social sciences, actually in all social sciences, you have some models which can be pretty complex and in physics you can have models which are quite simple. And again, I would say this is true, but I think this is especially missing the main point. Because for example, if someone claims that vaccines work, we could claim that actually my cousin got vaccinated and he still got the flu, for example. But this doesn't mean that vaccines don't work on average. And this is true for pretty much all the studies that we do. Usually we do not compare the maximum of one group and the minimum of the other group because we will never have that one is superior in every case. But we have the fact that maybe on average someone has like higher values of something, maybe higher values of math, of complexity. And here I want to expand a little on how we make arguments, how we counter the argument of someone else. Usually there is a thing called charity principle, which I don't know why most people don't know about, but it's the fact that if you want to disagree, you want to some way show that the claim that the other person is false, you need some way to take a strong version of that claim. You cannot try to make the claim as simple and eventually as ridiculous as possible because then it's going to be very easy to falsify it. So again, if I say that vaccines work, the simpler version is to say that vaccine always work. This is very easy to falsify. Uh, in any case, you will have at least a single case in which something didn't work exactly as intended. But if you apply the charity principle, you will have the claim that vaccine work on average, or that in general, it is better to get a vaccine than not getting vaccinated, or whatever you want. In any case, you want to make a good version of that argument. The last argument against was actually very surprising to me because immediately I had a reaction like, what is this crap? But then I realized actually they had a very good point. So what some people said is that the one on the right in the meme was actually not a real model, but it was just a linear fitting of data. And again, at the beginning I was a little annoyed because still, this is a linear model. You are applying a linear model. So it is a model. Still, the important thing is that usually in the papers, in a lot of research, the way this is framed in Word it's not that there is a linear relationship between the two variables, but just the fact that the two variables are connected in some way, which actually got me thinking very deeply about the difference between computational social science and more classical social sciences. Because many times in computational social sciences, when we make a model, we mean that model. While in classical social sciences, the linear model is mostly just to show that there is some kind of connection between two variables. But some way they do not mean that the connection between the variables is linear. And this was a kind of a revelation to me because it explains why in a lot of cases, social scientists do not try to build more complex models, but they try to just build a model for the occasion to show how some variables are connected but they do not do the work that, for example, is done in physics, where we really try to connect all the dots together to make a kind of grand model. But again, I'm more from computational social sciences than more classical social sciences, so if I'm saying something stupid, please let me know in the comments. As mentioned, not all the arguments actually were disagreeing, and actually we had a pretty good chunk of arguments which were agreeing and trying to expand and explain why we have this difference. And many people actually pointed out the problem of measurement. The fact that in physics, when we want to measure something like length, some way everything is pretty standardized. We even have units of measurements. We do not have units of measurements in psychometrics, for example. What is the unit of measurement of opinion 
or happiness. The problem is we do not have it and measurements in psychometrics and in general like in all the social sciences are pretty pretty complex and by the way we are going to have an entire series just on measuring abstract constructs in the social sciences so if you're interested stay tuned but the main point is that actually measuring is very complex and the measurement that we get has so many problems for example just ordinality and there are some studies which actually show how just the impact of ordinality can completely change relationships even within linear models and it can completely screw up more complex models I actually have a paper on that because I wanted to show how models are reliable to that and it ended up showing exactly the opposite and besides that a lot of people pointed out actually that we have a lot of even practical problems with measurements like the type of data that we collect the type of experiments that we can design we have ethical limitation we have budget limitation if you are from a funding agency just give us more money we need them we like them give us money on a similar note many people pointed out actually that there is a big problem with actually using complex models with few data and especially not many variety of data and this is called overfitting again probably we will have a video on that but is the fact that if you have a tons of parameters and just few data you can have that your parameters will fit perfectly your data but the problem is that if you collect new data then your model is going to perform very very poorly it's going just to shoot random numbers some people instead went in a different direction and they wrote that actually physics is a kind of grandpa of many other sciences some way physics already figured out how the basic particle the basic principle works and when you have this figured out is much easier than to build much more complex models the social sciences instead are kind of new it's true we can say that Aristotle whatever uh, everyone some way was doing social sciences since ever but some way they start having some pretty strong development kind of recently and as mentioned the social sciences have to go through a lot of complex problems that physics didn't have to go through so they are younger and they're facing way bigger problems so I would say it's perfectly reasonable to consider that their growth is going to be some way slower than the other sciences or at least that they will take much more time to figure out the basic principle and here by basic principle I don't know what other people mean but what I personally mean is not that we will have the human equation an equation that describes perfectly human but some way some kind of basic principles that will allow us to make some very powerful models we still don't have any clue of how this will look like but maybe we will figure it out or you know maybe it's going to be agent-based modeling and there is a beautiful channel about that so what to take from this personally I'm very excited about the future and I see a lot of growth in the social sciences towards more computational and some way like more math heavy models of course this is not going to be without problem as mentioned we have massive problems with measurements that we need to figure out how to deal with but I still hope that we will see some ways to actually advance and go through this also let me know in the comment what do you think about this if you have any other idea some people even mention going back to qualitative let me know what you think and with that said as usual do your homework write up your papers and remember to embrace the power of complexity